Hello again. In the last session of uh, our OpenTX setting up and how do you do it, we basically set up our radio, we did a couple of things in the setup, we put the SD card in, now we're actually ready to the, the nuts and bolts of it. So what I want to talk about this time is creating a model in the radio, binding it to a receiver and then going into beta flight and showing what you have to do on the radio in order to set that up in parallel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to imagine that I didn't have any models on here. So I'm going to pretend I'm going to create a whole new model under number six. And there's two ways you can do that. If you um, hold down enter under this, it will ask you if you want to create a model and we'll say yes. And then it'll ask us if we want to do what, what, what type of model we want to do. Now, I don't particularly like this, I have to say, because I found that it's not quite good enough. And I'd kind of forgotten it was here because as I said before, I, so many times, I will just grab a model and copy it and then use it to my own purposes and it's so easy like that but for this point of view we're going to do a multi so throttle assign channel um, throttle is normally number three if you're doing an AETR channel map that is uh, ailerons is number one elevator is number two throttle is number three and your is number four uh, you may have your own sort of favourite things to do and that's fine. From our point of view I'm happy with that so I'm just going to do this. Um, roll is coming up on channel 4 so roll is my A so that should be on channel 1 so let's do that. Pitch channel 2 is right and your is on channel 1 it should be on channel 4. So just make sure that's right. So we've got throttle on three, roll on one, pitch on two, and yaw on four. That's good for me. And this is where it gets a bit weird here. So it's saying arm, arm on SA. So this is going to be different depending on what radio you have. So SA is that switch there. But I don't want it on that switch there. I want it on this two position switch up here, which I don't seem to be able to do. If I press return there, normally I just expect to do the do the switches for it to recognize it but it hasn't done so I can it's only letting me do it on A, B, C or D which are these four switches here and I, I want to use that one for arming <laughs> thanks very much it's kind of why I don't like it so much so okay let, let's do this on A and then we'll figure it out as we go so at the very least you, you will want an arm switch so that's fair enough um, and then it's got mode my mode I'd normally have here as a free button switch, so let's use D, press enter. Now, with various radios, they're going to have different switch names, and some of them are not even named, which is quite annoying. But we'll be able to go back in and alter any of this anyway. And then beep it on aux 2. Well, I don't really do it like that, but let's put beep it on... Oops. No, I missed that. I was meant to say beep it on S... SWB, but okay, so it's like do enter to cons confirm. This is not a problem because I wanted to change bits anyway, and it's a way of letting us show what's going on. You notice there's a little star next to it. In order to get that active model, it's no good just press and return there because that, that doesn't do anything. You need a long press, and it will say, Do you want to select that model? and then the star will move. So, in our case, let's move to model 7. And then we just need to use our left and right buttons. So I'm going to go to that mix in a second. But obviously what you can do here is you can put your, your quad's name in. Name it something meaningful. If you've only got one quad, that kind of makes sense that it doesn't matter. If you're like me and you've got like 100 models kicking about, it's quite important that you've, you've got this named here. So you can just basically do things like this. And it's going to vary again how you get the capital letters so I'm going to call this quad but for this one I think I hold down the right yeah and then that capitalizes it oh it turns out I can't spell quad let's try that again <laughs> might stick a U in there U A come on focus camera D, just return. Now, 
Part of the reason I wanted to be in here is I wanted to talk about the timer. I find timers really, really useful. And there's, there's a couple of timers you have. So it's not quite the same as being on or off. So what I always set mine to is having throttle seconds. And that means it will do the count every time the throttle is active. If you just had the timer on, then it would just go all the time. So one thing I can do is I can tie my quads to approximately how long I can fly. And this isn't, um, you know, oh, I must land by this time. It's just about um, drawing my attention to it. That If I've been flying for four minutes, then my battery's probably dead. Maybe I'm not looking at the OSD. And there are actually loads of uh, different things in this. Throttle percentage, I don't find quite so useful. Don't know what throttle T is. And then you've got, you know, switches to put it on manually. So yeah, I'm gonna do throttle seconds. And I'm gonna set this to three minutes because I think my batteries are a bit dead but they can they can work after three minutes. Uh, you've got a count down here and I quite like the voice so it'll give me a quick shout when it's uh, looking dodgy. This minute thing here if you tick that it basically will stay after every minute how long you've been flying. Quite handy if you really want to know every minute where you are. Now there, there are a couple of things here that I'm going to leave off for now and then show you about it later. The e-limits e-trims. Uh, and we'll come back to see that when we're setting up the model. This is important because at the end of this all, you have got your binding of the model. So this is using a multi-protocol module. So for that, I need to set it to multi, and mine's gonna be a FreeSky D16. If you're using a regular FreeSky radio, you will probably just have D8, D16, maybe LR9, so you should set it to that. And you might be using something where you have to use an external module, um, in which case you would go to this external RF and you'd set your correct module in there and then do it as per normal. Now, one important thing in here, it will really whinge if you don't have it set, and that's fail safe. As far as beta flight goes, um, and many things that uses any kind of flight controller, you will want your no pulses, which basically puts the control signal out of bounds of what everything's expecting, it can detect a fail safe from there. Um, if you were not to do it, every time you select the model, it would go beep until you hadn't put a fail safe on, and that was bad. Um, we're going to come back and bind the model in a second because the other thing I just want to do is set up some of the other bits here. So we've got some stuff on helis we don't need as we're going through this thing. Flight modes, I'm not going to touch. Inputs, uh, don't be confused with mixer, we're not going to touch that. And then this mixes. This is what it set up for us when we went through that. We've got our channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four as we wanted, but it was all a bit rubbish here. So the mixer screen, it, it screws many people up because it's kind of complicated looking. Um, essentially all you've got here is the channel it's on. This is the weight, 100 means 100%. So, you know, 100% of the throttle means it's 100% of the throttle. And then you've got the um, input it's for. So we've handily labeled these the right way. And then this is just a text field to say what it does. So for this, it's on switch SA and it's for arming. As mentioned before, we didn't want switch SA. We wanted this one, which is, I don't know what it is. I think it's G. So this is pretty easy to change. With all of these things, it's normally a, a long press. So long press enter and then go to edit and there's a lot of stuff on here, a lot of which you don't need to know as yet. The only thing we care about is the source switch. So if we go to source SA, press uh, enter, short, and we can actually step through these, or I find it much easier if we just flick that switch, then it's like, oh right, you want SG. Yes, we do. And then we can do that. And the other thing, my mode switch was okay, but I decided beeper is a different switch. So I'm gonna long press that. I'm gonna edit, and I'm gonna change my source for beeper to this switch, which is B. And there you go, that's set on B, easy. And SD on mode, I was happy with. If you wanted to see what was going on with your channels and buttons as you did things, if we come out of this model, and this is going to change depending on what radio you've got because some of them have got more real estate than other things. Oh, you can see our timer's on here. If I just raise the throttle slightly, you can see the timer starts going down. 
Okay, so this one is down, and I can see that I've got channels. So this is channel one, you can see the little spars, channel two, channel three, channel four, and then these ones are my switches. So I've got arm switch, which is two position, mode switch here. You can see the position in the middle is basically zero, and my other switch was that beeper one there. And that's it in like a, a numbers form where you've got the minus 100 to plus 100. Oh, I've just noticed here that my countdown is silent. That's no good, is it? Let's have a voice there. So I saw my, my timer went past and I was like, why is that then? And it's because I had it to silent. 30 seconds, 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Timer one elapsed. Okay, so that's the timer working nicely now. So if you want to reset the timer, um, on this one it was a little bit different than uh, other radios. Timer's always been like a long press thing rather than short press. For example, here's my X9D here, and if my timer goes on, I would just hold down long press on the enter button and do a reset and reset the flight, and that resets that timer. On this one, it was a short press. Short press reset and you can do the individual timers you can have up to three timers we'll do the whole flight and we're back to three minutes anyway let's bind something up now to do that first we're going to go back into the model and we're going to go to the up from the bottom and you've got the bind thing there now you'll have rx numbers on here you can choose one if you want what the rx number actually means is if you've got an an rx that you've put as seven for example and this model would then not be able to talk to that one because it's a different RX number. If we simply change this to seven, we could have the same model which would be able to bind to different models everywhere, if that kind of makes sense. I, I tend to separate them out just to make sure I've absolutely got that right model. So by using a different RX number on every receiver, I can make sure I'm definitely connecting to the model that I've set up this specific uh, model here for. So there's going to be various types of receivers you got depending on what you're using. I'm going to stick to FreeSky because OpenTX is kind of synonymous with uh, FreeSky and I'm using this one because I don't have to connect it up to uh, a proper battery. So I'm going to be using this ESC which means I'm not supplying any power to here hence I don't have to take the props off. If you're ever going to plug into this then for goodness sakes takes the props off because you might slice your hands off otherwise. So receivers are all much of a muchness. Um, this is a kind of old one. This is an X4R which actually has connectors out. Uh, more popular will be something like this XM Plus. You've got the little bind button there you have to hold down. Uh, the bind button here is a little bit more accessible. It's just in there. The exception to the rule here is if you've got a little whoop like this, um, it might be using uh, what's called an SPI receiver, which you can initialize the bind from Betaflight itself, which is a lot easier than trying to poke something in there and find the bind button. Um, I'll show you how to do that one in a second, but let's bind up one of these first. So right now in the radio, I'm on the bind, but I haven't started yet because I don't need to. I'm going to get this one into bind because these are the biggest pains. Essentially, you kind of need two pairs of hands. You have to be able to hold a button down whilst plugging in power. And this is kind of why I'm using this ESC with this five volt supply here. It allows me to kind of cheat a bit, uh, especially when I'm filming, just so I can hold that with one hand and plug in power with that hand. Okay, so we have got a solid red and amber light there. What I'm going to do here is go in and select the bind. And you see we've got instantly a flashing red light which means it's bound. Now nothing happens until things are reset. So if we bring that out of bind, uh, we power off the quad and then we power it back on. We have now got that nice green light. Uh, something people can make the mistake is if you bring this too close, it's not going to do it now, you can basically uh, 
it can overpower with the signal and you can sort of lose signal. So if you keep them a little bit separate, it's gonna be easier. Okay, now we've got that bound, we can do some stuff on Betaflight. And I need to go into Betaflight just to show you what you would do if you had an SPI receiver like this. Okay, so here we are, we've got Betaflight up on the screen here and we've got the radio down here and I'm gonna use this quad to show you SPI binding. Uh, and I'm showing you this because a lot of people seem to miss out a step and then are convinced that it won't bind. So I'm just gonna plug this in USB first off and then I'm gonna to connect to that and I'm gonna to go to CLI. Now most people get this far, they just get it wrong at the very last bit. So uh, in a similar way to what we did before when we bound it to something else, I'm gonna to go to the bind, but this is gonna be a D8 star receiver. So I'm gonna change this type to D8 there. And I'm gonna go down ready for my bind. And what I'm gonna type on the screen here, and it depends, helpfully enough, which version of Betaflight you're using. On Betaflight 4.1, the command is bind underscore RX. We're on Betaflight 4.0 here, so our command is bind underscore RX underscore SPI. You hit that, it will say binding, and then we're gonna hit return, and that's gonna say binding. Well, it's gonna beep anyway. So after a couple of seconds, I'm pressing return. Telemetry recovered. I'm pressing enter just to come out of it. Now at this point, people think nothing's happened because nothing's happened on here, nothing's happened on CLI, and they miss out this bit. And this bit is you type save. It's as simple as that. Telemetry lost, telemetry recovered. And you'll see that telemetry gets recovered. Um, even if you haven't got like a telemetry receiver, it would work. So that is the crucial point, actually doing that save of the bind command. So I'm gonna connect into here again. And um, basically to find out that is, I'm just gonna come out of this bit. To double check that's bound, if you just look at the receiver tab and move things around, you will see that stuff is happening. All good news there, fantastic. Now, what I wanna do is here, I'm not gonna go through stuff like the ports and configuration and pitch tuning, stuff like that. I've made videos on them before. I just wanna tell you what you have to do on your radio to set up your quad for the first time. So, what we're gonna to go to is the receiver tab. And you can see here that our roll stick, our pitch stick, our yaw and our throttle is correct because we are using the AETR map. And that is said here, if for example, you're not using AATR, a common one would be uh, TEAR, which would look, uh, T, sorry, AER would look like that. If we were then to save that, you would see that, oh, hang on, this is wrong, because now our, our roll stick is not happening, our throttle sticks are signed there, it's all wrong. And literally you can just do what I did and that is you put your cursor there and you type in the correct mapping you've got which is A E T R one two three four like so. And then hit save and Telemetry all, lost. Telemetry recovered. All is good. So the reason I wanted to show you this screen is the most important part of setting up your quad for the first time is making sure your endpoints and your sub trim is correct. If you have a look on the screen there, if I move my roll stick, you'll see it goes to 1006 up to 1993 and it centers around 1500, 1502, 1504. We need this to center around 1500. We need the bottom to be at 1000. We need the top to be at uh, 2000. Now, don't ever touch the trims. These will have effect on the figures but you don't want to touch this. You want to use the sub trims. And to get there, you go into your model and you go across past the inputs, past the mixes, and you go onto this. This is the output screen. And if we go to channel one and do a long press enter, edit. We have the sub trim here and we have the max and the min. And I wanted to show you this because it goes back to something else uh, we were talking about earlier on. So first off, sub trim. You'll see at the moment we're not too far out. We just need to go down a, a few. Just look at your screen, make sure that centers at about 1500, all good. 
Uh, for our min value, if we move our stick all the way down, we're at 1006. So we want to go up slightly. So again, if we hit enter, we move the stick all the way down and we need to move it down more. And you see it beeps. Oh no, it won't go any further. What do you do? Well, I wanted to demonstrate this one because this is how they come set up. And this is something you'll want to change pretty much for all your models. If you go back to that first screen, you had a little option here that I said I was going to come back to, and I didn't lie. And it's called E limits. There's one called E limits, one called E trims. Trims are these things which we don't use on a quad. But e-limits means extend the limits. So at the moment, we can only take our sub trim to like minus 100. But if we click this, and we go back to that troublesome one, which was our min value for the roll sticks, you see now we can go beyond 100 and get that all the way down to 1,000. Once you've done that, Go down to the next one. The max value at the moment is a little, little bit under. It, de it kind of depends. You have to make sure you're right in the zone on this one. So I got 1994 there. So I'm going to up that a bit until it hits 2000. And then we're back on 1000, 2000. It bobbles out a bit sometimes. It just depends where that stick lands. There's a little bit of stiffness coming down from one side to the other, but pretty much 1500. So that's what you're aiming for, 1500 to 2000 to 1000. You can see I can put a little bit of pressure on the stick and it will go just a little bit further. So just bear in mind that when you're doing that. And the thing we can use in that is this thing here, the RC dead band. This is set to two. So just the fact that we've got like zero to two sometimes bobbles about depending how the stick gets let go that dead band keeps us around the right thing. Now there's one other thing in here and it's the direction. So at the moment you can see that our direction is right. As we move the stick that way it, it performs in the right way. Sometimes you'll find things don't do this and you can use a direction thing here to say inverse and you'll see it move the other way. Go back to regular and it moves that way. And what you should do is go through all your outputs for pitch and your and do the same thing. Throttle, the only difference is you're not really that concerned about the midpoint because it doesn't spring back to the midpoint. You're just concerned about getting your uh, minimum and your maximum at 1000 and 2000. 20. As soon as you've got that, save it and we can move on to the next bit. Now I'm just gonna pretend that I've finished all these but don't, don't pretend. The other tab we're gonna need as our minimum setup is the modes. And this is going to go in conjunction with our mixer tab. So if we go back here, we're in the mix. Now, this has already been set up. You can see on the screen that we've got arm and angle and horizon and beeper and air mode and all that gubbins. Um, but it's not set up that how the radio did it. So, for example, I set the arm to here, but that is on aux 1 instead of aux 2. This, this is easy to sort out. I mean, let's just let's just wipe these out and pretend we're doing this from scratch. All we do is say arm, add range. You see it's set to auto there. We can just flick that switch and it will detect that's aux one. You can see it's two positions, so it goes there to there. Just drag your thing over and that's now arming. Uh, the other thing we had was a mode switch. Now, I, I like to use uh, nothing switched as acro and then Potentially, I'd use uh, angle and maybe horizon so I can add a range there for angle. I just do that, it changes to aux 3 and I want that center position. And then for here, let's say I want horizon so I can add a range for that. And we can see if we switch all the way down, that's up there, so I'm just going to do that. And then what else do we have? Oh, we set up a beeper, didn't we? So let's add a range for that. And you see arm is showing up because at this point we haven't saved it. So it still thinks that's there. If we just click on save now, it will stop thinking that's the arm mode. So if I move beep over there, that's good there. Um, now the other thing I like to do is I like to have um, a set air mode. 
So here's here's uh, the situation where we haven't we haven't put a, an air mode in. So why don't we do this? All we need to do for our new channel, long press enter. Uh, we can set up the mix name. I'd call it air. We can say source, and as before, if we just click a switch, it will detect that that is SA, um, and that's what I have to do there. So that's on channel eight, and then if I say I'm going to add a link for where's air mode gone? Air mode there. Add range. Do the click. It's on aux four. Aux four is there. And then, for example, I could do, let's say I want total mode, I'll add range there, I'll do it on the top part of Ox4, like that. If I now save that, and I hide my unused mode, I'll just check this works. Arm is here, it glows up red because it says I don't want to arm. Most which is here, so at the moment we've got nothing. Acro, one down for angle, two down for horizon. I got my beeper here only goes when I go there if I wanted to do it so it goes on both switches for example I could just extend the range out like so so beeper air mode I decided was here and turtle mode flip over crash is here so that is how to set up the very basics of beta flight I mean this is pretty much ready to go now you'd want to set up some different things but from the radio's point of view it's got its modes done, it's got its sub trims done, it's got its timer done, we're good and ready to fly there. So one final thing, and it's for anybody that can remember back at the start of the video when I said you'd only set this thing up once, and there's two ways to make a model. So I did the thing where I went to a new um, model number, I did a long press, create model, and then I chose multi. Now at this point, I could have then clicked back and we'd still end up with a model and the difference is what we'd have is none of the sort of intelligent parts we just have our basic mix of our first four channels in the AETR way so that's a way of not using the little wizard which I don't particularly like anyway so uh, let's delete that and to delete something you have to it has to be non-active so I'll go back to here select it then I go to here and say delete. My point about you'll never do this again is we've taken all that time to set our quad up and generally speaking if you've got a quad and you fly it and you get used to the switches the next quad you fly you want the exact same config so of course you just want to copy it so all you have to do is single press and that will highlight let's move it to there let's press it again and we've got a copy of that quad uh, and if we make that active then the things that we might do differently is we'd probably call it something different. We'd give it a different RX number, but the rest is the same. Now, you'll have a different receiver, so you might have to go back and do your sub trims and bits and pieces in beta flight the second time. But basically, all your switches and stuff are going to be good, and all the settings we did in the timer and stuff are the same. So it's just tweaking rather than setting every time. So that's it. That's all I've got for this time. Um, I'll be back soon with another video about the radio. As I said, I've got a, a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. But if you've got any burning issues, please feel free to shove them in the comments below and I'll see which ones I tackle in what order. Until next time, bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.